Hello, this is Mick from Mix Miniatures. One or two people have asked me if I can outline the techniques that I use for making scale models of actual buildings from photographs of the original. The method that I use is to take prints from the photographs and build them up in layers as I'll be showing in the short video that follows. If you like the video, I'd be very grateful if you could share it around and give it some likes. Thanks a lot, and here we go. The first part of the procedure is a good quality, high resolution, straight on photograph of the building. If the perspective is a bit out of skew because of where you're standing, then there are Photoshop clones or Photoshop itself where you can use the perspective tool to straighten up the edges of the building. And sometimes I have had to do that. Then the file is entered into a word. I use a word document and to scale the building up, I take the height of the door. So if it prints out with the door 25 millimeters high. That's good enough for OO gauge because the door's about six, six and a half feet high. And if I was working in O gauge, the door would have to be about 42 millimeters high. And that scales the whole of the rest of the building. The first step is to print out a draft black and white copy of the bait to make the base of the building uh, this is to save time and to save expensive printer ink which is actually more costly than gold i believe once i've got the grayscale draft copy i glue that to heavy card in this case it's two millimeter mounting board which I have a ready supply from, from a local uh, picture framing shop. Uh, they sell me the offcuts at an extremely reasonable price. And if you've got one of those local to you, it's very, very useful and very economical. Failing that, you can buy it on uh, eBay or Amazon, but it can be reasonably expensive. Once the glue has dried and it's fairly hard, I use a craft knife to cut out the windows and door openings to form the base of the building. Here comes the expensive bit. For this particular building, which is actually a boutique in a row of terrace shops in the marketplace at Leek in the Staffordshire Moorlands, I print three good quality colour copies of my original photograph because I'm going to use those to make up the different layers of the building to give it relief, to give it depth and to make it look more realistic. The first of those layers, the first of those colour photographs is cut out and glued over the top of the two millimetre base layer. I find it useful to maybe hold it up to a window or some sort of light or some source of light where uh, the light shining through allows you to uh, line up the windows and doors properly. Uh, and that's then glued and allowed to set. The window, uh, I flip the um, base over and the windows and doors are then cut diagonally using a craft knife and folded inwards. Uh, a good supply of glue on those little folds and they're folded back to form the openings and the window frames and, and this is the, again the first coloured layer on the base. This is what the 
the first layer looks like from the front once those window flaps have been uh, folded and glued back. On this particular building, the upper windows are made from the second one of the printed layers, the printed colour prints that I made, uh, glued to thin card and the window frames, the windows themselves, the glazing uh, uh, on this scale of model, I use sellotape over the openings of the windows so that they show as being glazed. That thin card with the sellotape glazing is then glued into position behind the first coloured based layer. And I find these pound shop clamps very, very useful for making sure that things actually stick together and hold together. A few minutes using this particular type of glue and that's rock solid. For the actual window shop window I'm going to go into a little more detail so using the lower half of the colour print that I took the upper windows from again I've glued that to thin card and the tricky bit comes I want some more detail here so I've used a small craft knife scalpel miniature box cutter whatever you prefer and my trusty magnifying lit up lenses to actually cut out, very carefully cut out the window frame for this particular part of the project. Here you can see I've glued that shop window frame to the base layer and behind it I've placed the photograph of the shop window display from yet another coloured copy that too has had sellotape placed over it so that we get the glazing effect in the window here we can see in closer detail the effect that you get from layering up on the colour photographs that I've used the colour prints that I've used the shop title is uh, glued to thin card and that's put on as an extra layer and this creates the feeling of depth and detail. The next couple of shots show the detail that you can achieve by using layers of card, thin card, according to whichever you're using. The sort of card I use is the cartons off a soft drink tins. I find that useful because it's native brown card and you don't get white edges showing. That's another tip which I've inherited from somebody else and I find that very, very useful because there's nothing worse than a white edge showing. And here's a little more detail that uh, taken from a funny angle. But you can see that it actually builds those layers up and gives the impression of depth. Now for the carcass of the building, that's some more of that uh, two millimeter mounting board, width and height of the building itself and the sides folded back. You can see that on the left hand side, I've created the shape of the chimney, which will go into the finalized building. At this point, if you add the chimney shape in, it makes life a lot easier later on. The completed front of the building has now been glued to the carcass. The sides are still bare and I've put some strips of card down, glued those strips of card to the chimney to give a square shape, which will eventually form the chimney. This town leak is famous for its chimney, so I'd get shot if we didn't see one of these fine chimney sticking out of this particular building. Here I've used some brick effect texture brick paper most people call it and I've glued that over the sides and wrapped it round the square shape of the chimney so that when that's when the roof's on that will be a complete wrap around effect. This is a 
low relief building so it's normally going to be fitted in amongst other buildings or maybe at the end of a terrace so it's worth paying some attention to the ends but it, it's not as vital as the detail on the front. Here I've used some slate tile roof effect paper glued to a suitable shaped piece of card with a notch cut out for the chimney and that's getting close to the end. The roof fits neatly into the gutter ledge at the top and again any horrible white edges or discoloured edges what I tend to use is fine tipped marker pens rather than uh, paint. You have to be very, I do use a certain amount of acrylic paint but you have to be careful with card models that you're not wetting things and making the card warp. And here's more or less the finished product. There's a few details that have been added with rolled paper chimney pots in the time-honoured fashion. And on the left-hand side, I've used a cocktail stick coloured with a black sharpie to represent the downpipe in its realistic position. I hope you've enjoyed that short video and I hope it gives you some clues and hope it's helpful and gives an insight into this technique that quite a few successful modelers use of building up layers of photography to make buildings that look the part. If you've enjoyed the video I'd be grateful if you could share it around, give it a few likes and that means I'll be able to produce more videos with more techniques as we go along. Thank you very much for watching and take care.